is you can put your elbows on the table and that fell. So I'm reading his body language, which is saying that sucked. And so we go right back to it. I'm Joe Navarro, author, former FBI agent, and this is Body Language Support. At Erica Destiny asks, why does eye contact intimidate the shit out of me? Well, the fact is that it's not just you. A lot of us are intimidated by eye contact. And in fact, all primates avoid making too much eye contact with each other. Apes will look at the alpha. He has the ability to look over everybody, but everybody else, tries to avoid making too much of a direct eye contact. And we humans are much the same. When the eye contact is too direct, too intense, it is intimidating. And this is something that obviously poker players have used for decades to intimidate each other. It really creates a subconscious instability that often drives them to change their behavior because they're not aware that they're being intimidated uh, at a subconscious level. Here's a question from at I like sliced pear. Can eye contact and long silent gazes be love language cause shit? When it comes to courtship, when it comes to dating, most of the decisions that we make is non-verbally. And eye gaze behavior is very powerful. When we are in the presence of someone we enjoy, it can certainly be indicative of, I like this person uh, very much, and I would certainly pay close attention to it. So on to the next question. It comes to us from a friend of mine, at Eric Goulard. Hey Joe, what do you think about people who take off their glasses in the middle of a meeting, interview, or on important uh, points? That's a great question and it often manifests in different ways. Sometimes people take the glasses off and they rub the bridge of the nose or they may uh, massage the back of the ear where the, the glasses rest and that is to accommodate themselves. They may also take their glasses off to uh, pacify, you'll often see people put them in their mouths as, as, as they're thinking. This is no different than a pacifier. Other people use it um, almost like a baton to demark a point as they're talking, while others are using it basically to create novelty to get other people's attention. At Ezra Hamoud asks, how do I improve my poker face? The easiest way to improve your poker face is something that I taught uh, Phil Helmuth a long time ago. Just keep in mind, you can improve your poker face, but not your poker body. So sometimes we'll reveal things somewhere in our body, but put your elbows on the table, bring your thumbs together, and you perch your chin on the thumbs and then you interlace the fingers and they block your mouth. You look straight ahead, but slightly down. And what happens is you virtually disappear because there's nothing there for anyone to see. So after a while, people will avoid looking at you because there's nothing new there. There's no novelty. At SCI Suburb, Asks, my question is, when you see the eye twitch of irritation, how do you use body language to help the other person feel more comfortable without directly addressing the fact that you saw them appear irritated? A lot of times we display discomfort through our eyes. We'll squint, we may look away, we may cover the eyes when something is, is bothering us. And the easiest way to make other people more comfortable without saying anything is to move slightly away and angle yourself. Humans tend to approach each other uh, directly. What we don't realize is that this actually minimizes face time. The closer we get, the more intense the look. This can act as an irritant. One of the best things that we can do anytime is when we approach each other, and we, we sense that there's some sort of irritation or psychological discomfort, is always to move back and then always angle yourself so that you're looking at each other at angles rather than directly. This 
whether you're in business or in interpersonal relationships, this actually minimizes FaceTime, where by angling, this increases FaceTime because it contributes to psychological comfort. At Jessica Basic 2 asks, is duping delight then pretending to experience delight, or is it like narcissistic smirk? So in 1986, Paul Ekman coined the term duping delight. And basically what that looks like is you have this little smirk on your face like you're getting away with something. I would say it's like showing off. You can take great pleasure in getting away with something, but when you exercise duping delight, it's, uh, it's sort of like telling the world, yeah, I got away with it. So here we have a question from at Artemis Moon God, and he asks, are there body language differences among different cultures? Do people of different countries display different body language cues? Yes. In other cultures, they say hello differently. We tend to wave our hands high and above. In other cultures, they may do it more subtly. We tend to say, oh, everything's okay, and yet in other cultures, that's considered a phallic symbol, so they don't do the okay sign. We like to shake hands, and we do so all over the United States, but interestingly enough, we have cultures within cultures. So in New York, you may have more of a strong grip, where in the Midwest, it might be just a, a quick, a uh, touch of the hands and, and movement away. It's always good to consider the culture that you're in because when we mirror these behaviors, it lets others know that we respect them and that we are in synchrony with them. And of course, as I've always said, synchrony is harmony. Here's a great question from Add Two Believes Yes. Can body language be submitted as admissible evidence in court? Absolutely. In the famous 1967 case of Terry versus Ohio, the Supreme Court considered this and they said if a police officer can articulate with particularity the body language that he or she observed, it can absolutely be used in court to justify the actions of a police officer. To answer your question again, absolutely yes. At John Robinson asks a very important question, and it's directed at me. Most of your FBI profiling career, Joe, was before today's more widespread autism awareness. But did you in interview known autistics? Were they different? My approach was always to deal with the person that was in front of me, however they manifest. There were some people who were on the autism spectrum. And as an interviewer, it's not my job to figure their behaviors out other than to note them and say, how do I get around this? You deal with each human as they present and you try to work with them to establish communications. And if that means stepping back, if that means handing them a piece of paper, if that means not making eye contact, uh, then so be it. Dale Roxu asks, how can I end a conversation politely with someone that talks forever without just walking off? Tried looking at the watch with no luck. Dale, I've been there. You try to give off signals, you look at your watch two or three times, but let's face it, with some, nothing may ever work. Um, the first one I like to do is I orient my foot towards an exit. A lot of people catch that and sense that uh, I'm moving away slightly. There's other times when no amount of body language gets through to these people. And so what I do is I put my hand on their arm and I say, buddy, I'd love to stay, but I gotta run. Take care, must go, so long. Oh, this is one of my favorite. At Sinister Vaults ask, hey Joe, what does it mean when people shake their leg while sitting? Well, I'm glad you asked that because I do that all the time. Shaking the leg or the hands or the feet is a repetitive behavior. And just like twirling the hair, strumming the fingers, anything that's repetitive is a soothing behavior. I do it all the time and it's just to calm me down. So here we have a great question from at Osana F. I have a question. 
It may be more difficult to answer, but if anyone can do it, it's Joe. My question is, why do some people tend to divert their eyes to the mouth of the person they're speaking to? Very simple. Lip reading. A lot of us take comfort in reading each other's lips as we're talking to each other. And that's one of the things we found out when we started masking up for COVID-19 is how much we do this and didn't realize we were doing it. At Jolly CX asks a very important question. With the rise of AAPI hate, many Asian Americans are being attacked both verbally and physically. What can we do to pinpoint specific body language actions in which one appears hostile and to avoid conflict? There is no specific body language that might indicate hostility other than things that are quite quite visible. But we know from studies done in the 60s that there are things that we can do by the way we carry ourselves, making ourselves uh, both physically visible, but making ourselves larger. Something so simple as walking with a greater stride, looking around, making eye contact with everybody you see. The other one is get off the phone, look around, don't bury your head down, and just be aware of everybody around you, and hopefully that will help. So here's an interesting question from Shut Up Togna. What body language do I have to use to tell the people at the next table that I find them really interesting and would love to be friends with them? Why are you waiting for body language? Sometimes the easiest thing to do is to say, I find what you're talking about fascinating. Do you mind if I join you? And that's often good enough. From at Khloe Kardashian, I've always been intrigued watching interrogation videos and looking for clues in their body language. So have I. There's so much information that we give away while we're being interviewed. Our reactions, for instance, to the question that's being asked. I think you're onto something, Chloe. The fact is that we use body language to evaluate how people do in interviews, not to detect deception, but to look for their reactions that might indicate psychological discomfort. So at Andrea, and then there's a B, 97951440. How many others could there be with that number? Anyway, I'd love the verdict of the professional body language expert on Megan. She twitched, she took her head the wrong way, did not make eye contact, a good performance from a trained actress. So I believe this question has to do with the interview with uh, Oprah and uh, Meghan Markle. Anytime we see an interview, you really don't know what's behind the camera. And that affects everything in front of the camera. You don't know how many people are there providing lighting, sound, how many producers are present, who's moving around, and so forth. The second thing that you don't understand is the context of everything that has happened before the camera is turned on. So what I tell people is this, look, when you listen to an interview, listen to the words that are said, and then just compare it to with what we know. The fact of the matter is we don't know what was going on because we only saw what was in front of the camera, not behind the camera. At Yenefficient asks, is mirroring someone's body language equivalent to flirting? Not necessarily. You can certainly do it to flirt, but it's not always indicative of, of flirting. At Superstar Comms asks, is mirroring body language in confrontational situations always beneficial or ill-advised? You know, I think the better question is, how do we use body language to either improve uh, a situation or to diffuse it? Because certainly we don't want to escalate it. If someone's angry and posturing and yelling and screaming and puffing their chest out and you do the same thing, that's counterintuitive. That's just gonna get you to be angry and agitated and so forth. My philosophy is one of you has to calm things down. And the easiest way to do that is not mirror the behaviors, to step back, 
angle your body, tilt your head, lower your voice, avoid the eye contact, and take greater control of yourself so that the person that's out of control will look ridiculous while you look like you have mastery over yourself. Replying to at Gigi Poo, she asks a great question. Give me an example of a power pose. Most of us are familiar with the arms akimbo, elbows out, everybody knows that. But we can actually do a power pose by placing our elbows on the table and rather than placing them near us, place them further apart and then steepling. Steepling is the only behaviors that we humans share that is indicative of confidence. At the Aiden Hunt asks, you ever see two people sitting together at Starbucks and wonder if it's a first date or a job interview? Yes, I have, in fact. So job interviews and courtship behavior, dating, have a lot of similarities. Both are drinking coffee at the same time and, and so forth. So what I look at is, are there differences? Are they truly mirroring each other in a social way or are they mirroring each other in a more intimate way? But also keep an eye on the feet because when people like each other, their feet will go near each other. At Jarzim asks a very timely question. I'm required to wear a face mask to do my job interview tomorrow, but I can't decide if it's good for me or it's bad for me. We often think that the whole face is communicating, but the fact is your whole body's communicating. Use your eyes to express sentiment. So we use the eyebrows uh, as exclamation points. Tilt your head when, when it's appropriate. Use your shoulders to communicate. Your whole body communicates. Put it to good use. At Nusans and Gigi asks, if body language is important, why aren't we taught it at school? That's a good question. It should be taught in school. We are born without the ability to speak. And so we must be able to read the baby in order to take care of that baby and feed it. Number two, we assess for danger non-verbally. And number three, courtship behavior. We use body language. So to your question, why isn't it taught in schools? I would argue the better schools do. So here's a question from, I don't make these up folks, at 1H3LL0K as in kilo, one, TT as in tango, tango, Y. You can tell a lot about a person from their eyes and body posture. You can see if they are confident or not, and by the eyes, I can always tell when it doesn't match the smile on their face. Well, congratulations. This is one of the things that I always look for is, do all the clues that come from the body say the same thing? Sometimes you get mixed answers. For instance, a person will say, yeah, I really like that. But as they're saying that, for instance, the lip will pull up. So it'll look like this. Yeah, I really like that. No, they don't. To look for the synchrony in all the body language that you read. So congratulations at 1H3 LL0. K is in kilo, one, tango, tango, Yankee. It's no surprise to me that, that people are both interested and captivated by body language. It's the primary means by which we communicate. We may not know all the terms of art, but boy, we're interested in the eyes and the mouth and the chin and everything else about us. And this is why we study and we examine body language, because innately we know this is really the number one way that we humans communicate with each other every day.